I think the only time I really got into sports was with uh, the Mario games. Mario baseball, Mario soccer. I mean, Mario. I like sports. I just don't like We're talking real though. sports here. We're not talking about <laughs> playing them. No, nah, that, that was the first time I like. I low-key learned how to play sports yo, through yo, Mario. Yo, 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 yo. was the first time I got into sports? No, no. Dunk City 2018. Mario hit that grand <laughs> yeah, slam, that baby. Was, that was dope. Hold square. Hey, <laughs> welcome, uh, welcome to the Joystick Show, episode 176. Very Ooh, nice. We're back. We it's are. Been wow. Wow. The the four four it's been a while. Four of us. It's been a while. What's up, pals? I mean, we've been, we've been, we've been, we've been. We're here. always going to be. Kinda. That's the point. You know? <laughs> yeah. Your dads are always here for you. Mm-hmm. We're always going to be there for you. Uh, but your other dads are here too. And uh, I, feel like, I feel like they're uncles. Uncles. uncles? Yeah. They're not. He, they're not here every holiday, but yeah, they're here yeah, often. Yeah. I, I dig it. I, yeah. I dig it. <laughs> so I mean, you're a legit uncle. Uh, yeah. For what it's worth. Yeah. And you're a pre-K teacher, so you're basically an uncle. So mm-hmm. there you go. I'm like a big brother. Uh, welcome to the Joystick Show. Uh, I'm gonna get through the YouTube shit real fucking quick. Uh, oh. If you want to help us out, you could like this episode. You could subscribe to the boys on Team Joystick. And if you're interested in what it is we're gonna talk about today. <laughs> It's right there. I oh, interacted whoa. with the graphic. Ah, yeah. oh, it was There's fun. A, Look like, at me. Wow. 20 Look bullet me. points or so. Yo, Jerry, push me. Push me. <laughs> ah, now it's gone. Okay, so there we go. <laughs> that was fun. Uh, Fucking, yeah, lots of stuff to talk about. That's why I wanted to rush through that. And I think the best way to start is it's been a fucking while. So let's see what everybody's been up to yeah. in the past two to three weeks, starting with... Dylan, mm-hmm. what's up? Me? Yeah. I have a story to talk to everyone about. Supposedly. A, pl- yeah. a place I went to on a journey mm-hmm. uh, in a beautiful place called Hicksville in Long Island. Interesting. I don't know if you guys know about I've Hicksville. I've been to Hicksville. Like I've a, heard they, of it. Uh, you go there for either like really good Indian food, surprisingly. There's a giant fucking Indian population in the middle of Long Island, which is hysterical. However, there's also a giant Ikea there, which is why most people go. However, next to the giant Ikea is a place that makes Dave and Buster's look like child's play. Okay. And that is round one Hmm. in Hicksville. Hmm. Is that R1? It's round one. one. It's written out round and then the number one. I don't know what this is. Uh, It is a three-floor arcade Dave and Buster's style place, Mm -hmm. but it is mostly Japanese games. So Ooh. it's like those really hard shits. There's like 20 different Dance Dance so Revolutions. Like the rhythm games and shit uh, like that. There's like 800 crane machines. And then they have everything that Dave & Buster's has. Yeah. Go to the basement, 10 pool tables, 10 foosball tables, bowling alley. Nice. Uh, there's like party bowling room. Alley. Bowl, bowl, you know, there's like party rooms yeah. and shit like that for like the kiddies, you know. But uh, yeah, uh, highlights from that. There's a game that there's like an airsoft gun. So essentially, it's like target practice, but it actually shoots out like okay, cool. it shoots out like soft rounds. Got gotcha, you, got gotcha. you. Uh, yeah, there's like 20 different VR games for people that you know we're not gifted like Joey and have the <laughs> access to that. You can go there and you can play fucking oh, I'm, you know, getting I'm in by, the ocean. I'm getting eaten by a dinosaur. <laughs> yeah. oh, I'm in Halo. There's a pretty good Halo one. I like Halo. It's pretty nice. cool. Yeah. Uh, in general, it's just like you know, I feel like a the upfront cost of a place like that. Like I was looking up how much some of these arcade machines cost. Like whoever put the eight million dollar investment into this fucking place. <laughs> yeah, right. They're like two thousand dollars a pop, these yeah, fucking machines. Yeah, and then like some of the Japanese ones are like forty five K. I can like imagine the whole, yeah. the whole dance dance shit yeah. or like the rhythm. Some of games. these games come with like extra things to play hold and point it with. Yeah. Yeah. yeah mm-hmm. You gotta have extra. Or even just like stuff. the rhythm like there was one that was like uh it just kind of was like uh, like an infinite runner, but you just controlled it with like a spinning thing. And so like, it was like spinning. It was fucking crazy. But uh, yeah, uh, I feel like we have to have an excursion one of these yeah, days. Yeah, I was about to say, Hicksville's not that far. Yeah, uh, it's not. Yeah. It really isn't. It's just a little a little highway away. Sounds like we got to And gotta I feel like there needs to be an excursion sick. one day. It's been a while since we've uh, branched out to the LI too. Maybe a chronicle. Woo. Perhaps as well. Got to tell Jose. He'll, he'll, cool. he'll show up for that. He he'll will. Show up. We'll see Jose. Everyone who's been you know asking you know yeah, in the yeah, comments. Yeah. He'll be I've around. Seen, Don't worry. I've seen all the deleted comments every time. There's tons of comments every video. Yeah, they get People, removed. They're like, hey, where's where's Jose? Where is? He? I'm the one that deletes them because <laughs> I'm jealous of him. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's like I make the stuff, you know. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. and in terms of other stuff, I've been up to today. I took my five hour uh, safety 
DMV course or Ooh, whatever that shit is. DMV. That, yes. You're gonna be the last. I one have it license. already. What do you mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah but he's gonna get a license. Oh, you're racing TikTok, now. TikTok. TikTok. It Time expires in May. So oh, gotta, shit, oh, yeah, shit. You really do got you, you guys got to have a race to get your license, and then you guys have a, a, I have only a race to so lose got, like, your license. I only got four lessons left, I think. Oh, so, look. yeah, no. But uh, that five hour class, a lot of people, they just like pay money and then they get the certificate. Mm. I know a few places that what? did that. Yeah, this place is a dude. They did it in COVID, and you would just like turn off your screen. Yeah. So now that's just the baseline. So now there's a Zoom session with an overly Italian man. Who will now just walk you through the safety steps on YouTube? And does he have YouTube Premium? No, and he's not skip <laughs> and he's not skipping the ad because he's out on a smoke break every thirty minutes. Because what else would the DMV uh, safety instructor guy be doing? And my 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 least favorite thing about this because I like I, I didn't even want to talk about this, but like it hit me so much today of what I experienced, right? About this time. And I noticed that throughout, now I'm connecting because on YouTube, it's the same two or three videos we're watching. So now these are like important characters in my life. You know what I uh -huh. mean? So the first person that, that does these safety videos is an old Hispanic woman, or not old, but like 40s-ish Hispanic woman, uh, Consuelo looking for okay. Family Guy. And she just walks you through all of the steps of how they're going to... She doesn't say uh, how to pass. How they are going to purposely fail you okay. is how she puts it. Gotcha. So she's like, mm -hmm. if you turn this way, no, no, no yeah. that's a failure. No, <laughs> no. And you turn this way, no, uh, no. You hit the curb. <laughs> no, no, no. And that's the entire video. Nice. So much so there's a part of the video where it cuts. And it went from like there was two people in the car to one person in the car. Of like there was other people in the car as she's rotating was doing, cast. Yeah, or... no, yeah, as it, as in like she was doing a lesson and then midway she pulled out her phone and started recording a YouTube video. So much so that as it's like cutting to like go to the next part of the video, the guy in the back seat takes out his phone to like ask her a question and she's like, "Shut up, I'm filming." <laughs> I'm filming a video. That's is it funny. part of the video, or no. she, is she trying to make a joke? No, it's he no. tried interrupting, oh, and she's wow. like, "Hey, I'm making a video," and then he's like, okay. "Wow," and he like goes and he's like, but you still see him like awkwardly in the back, like on his phone. My favorite is a JPEG mafia looking black guy teaching you how to turn. Oh, that's great! Ten out of ten. <laughs> Russian guy who teaches you how to park. Incredible, ten out of ten. He does every video. It's like the Justice League of fucking yeah. of the DMV oh, vehicle geez. safety. This is amazing. All just on YouTube and <laughs> it's incredible. And uh, just shout outs to to Tony Walter, the legend. Uh, he really, he really. And guess what? That five hour class, two hours. Yeah, mine was on Zoom. Suck. Mine yeah. was literally five <laughs> hours. No, mine was like three hours. Two hours, baby. And he's like, guys, this is YouTube videos. <laughs> We're gonna knock this yeah, shit out. Yeah, it's just videos. That's uh, all it is. Yeah. I'm going to share quickly what my experience was. It was five hours. The guy was explaining everything. And the only video we watched, we watched two videos. One of like oh, so a guy who killed all his friends because they were <laughs> partying. They were Fun. all partying. Fun. And then the other video was a very outdated video about like the safety procedures and like don't be drinking. Bro. And he goes, and we're going to get one of the best help, the healthiest people of this generation, Bruce Jenner. And he comes out. Hey, everyone. <laughs> my name is Bruce Jenner, Olympic medalist. And healthy man, and here to teach you. It's a little, and, and we're all like, it's a little too deep for a Bruce Jenner impersonation, just to say. But yeah, you know. we were all looking at him, we were like, oh wow, it's, okay, this, this yeah. video's old. No one thought to make a new one. You know, that's so strange. <laughs> Everything I watched was made like a few years ago on YouTube, and it was like not good quality. But like, then there was one that we watched. Like, what is it? Like Canadians' worst drivers or whatever. Canada's America's worst drivers. <laughs> We watched that for like 45 minutes. Dude, we're watching, we just watched car crashes. We're watching we're like, Don't do that. No, it's a reality. It's like we have Shaniqua from Brooklyn and we're taking her on a drive to see if she can pass the test. It's actually that. And it's like 50 bucks for every time you have an infraction. She's like, oh, hell no. And it's like <laughs> actually her. She's like cursing at people. And like you could tell they're in like Flatbush driving around. <laughs> I'm like, what is the, It's like a reality TV show with That's a guy. Amazing. And it's like hosted by a guy who's trying his best to be Guy Fieri, but he's not. I like it. Yeah. We're going to see yeah. if they pass their test. Exactly. Some SpongeBob <laughs> shit, man. Say who's next? Who the fuck is Bro, next? Bro, they used to tell you. So. You know now they don't tell you what your score is on oh, the yeah, test Oh yeah, you gotta anymore. check. Yeah. Like you have to check online, <laughs> fucking, because apparently people would get pissed at the the test person, yeah. the proctor. Yeah, yeah, it's fucking crazy. <laughs> the first time I got it, I think I had my points, but like after COVID, the, after mm -hmm. I took it, 
all online. Damn, that sucks. I want it right there. What about you, pal? <laughs> what have you been up to? Bro, I've just been fucking like working a yeah. lot on rise and grind Too you, you were working life. today i was working today and i'm probably gonna work tomorrow <laughs> what the fuck is that about like a huh? project or something no there's like uh it's a like an incident response like there's something bad happening so everyone's like over time. all hands yeah. on that's, yeah, that's what my hands. dad does the, man. The my dad something happens and the like he's like oh uh, hey joe uh there's a problem and then i won't see him like the whole day yeah like, literally <laughs> probably something like that <laughs> Be like that, man. Yeah, Sorry, I'm like usually happy that often. But the audio levels, mm-hmm. you know how it is. Yeah, this is the first time it's happened for me, so I don't. I'm not like, too worried or bothered, right. but not complaining. So you yeah. just just coding and risking rain, right? That's well, I'm not. Much. I'm not personally coding. I'm more like learning and like just like you know researching. And You're stuff. just showing up. This is yeah. I mean, I'm learning a lot. That's the thing. I feel that's, you. That's the big Jer- Jerry's the guy, like the ship is sinking and Jerry's handing out water. <laughs> you know? He's like, he's like, yeah, you gotta stay hydrated, man. You gotta, <laughs> come on, man. He's like, I got rope. I got rope for you, man. We're good. <laughs> uh, I can look for it. <laughs> I can look for the rope. No, I mean, I have like, you know, context because I worked on it before with somebody that's not there anymore. Uh, and, uh, yeah, so. I got you. I got you. Yeah. Jerry, the advisor. I feel Jeez. that. I feel yeah. that. What about so you? So it's just oh. a lot of work, you know? Fuck. Just, well, that was his thing, right? What wasn't? Oh, that was Dylan's thing. What the driving thing? Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm just moving the fucking conversation. Yeah, yeah, we, got, we, got whole, <laughs> we got a whole guy who literally the reason why we did a podcast early. We have a whole fucking thing to get to. Yeah, yeah. which McCullough. Um, I've just I've been busy, but what I have been on my free time playing is uh, a few games to get my platinums up. And uh, I've just been failing pretty miserably at these two games. One of them is Have a Nice Death, which is a roguelike game, a 2D roguelike. And the other one is GTA 3 from the Definitive Collection. I can't even play it. I'm a roguelike, bro. Oh, it's, okay. I, I'm getting too frustrated. Not for what okay. it's worth. I looked it up. It has like a 0.2% so, or something Okay, so like here's that. the thing. Joey... You have personally picked some of the worst games. No, of yeah, the platinum. No yeah. offense. You have to keep in mind, as <laughs> someone who has platinum a couple of games in my in my time, every time I'm about to play a game, first of all, I should preface: I don't let a platinum stop me from playing a game. Mm-hmm. But if I'm going to platinum a game, I always check the trophy guide, and if that shit is like nine out of ten difficulty, seventy plus hours, it's not for me. You know, I just enjoy mm-hmm. the game. I've learned that. So this learn month. that lesson I've now. I've learned that this month because I did have a nice death couldn't do it and was getting frustrated and i was like fuck and this also, i'm gonna do something easier and also the shit that fucked you in the gta 3 uh trophy or rather platinum thing would not have happened if you had a trophy guide because they they label all missable no, i trophies. was watching that and i didn't know that i didn't know the the passway point was a certain area apart like i, I kind of fucked myself over i knew what they said they were like don't do this and i was like got it i won't do that and I did that without me even realizing it. I was like, oh, <laughs> shit. So you did that. That's you did how that. you did that. I did I, that. I also yeah. just remember I played the the original remake of it, not the definitive edition, like when they first remastered it. And I like I got through half the game and I was like, I can't fucking play this. I can't. It's hard. Yeah. The driving is awful. The, the, the controls are terrible. I remember I even had uh, remember when they came out with all the, like the in-between games. Like there was like Vice City Stories. Mm-hmm. There was like the DS one. Yeah. And I remember the uh, the uh, episodes from Liberty City. That shit, too, was impossible to play, even back in the day. So I can only imagine. That's crazy. Yo, you know what was my Miss Trophy? You you know the, the trophy where you have to kick somebody in, a, in Assassin's Creed 2? Assassin's Creed, the Leonardo da Vinci. <laughs> I missed that shit. Bro, you got to play the remastered version. Now you can replay uh, fucking... Replay Collect all the feathers. I don't think I've ever collected all the yeah, feathers. Yeah, I never got that. Those get easier young. every game. Like, there's even a point where you could just buy the map and it just shows them on, on the map for you. Just oh, 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 I don't know. <laughs> the fact that, I didn't know that. U- U- Ubisoft games just became, like, the same game. It's it's very yeah. funny. It's just like, oh, there's a bunch of stuff you can collect. Go to the... Climb the top of this thing. Is it sad that jump. I don't mind? Like, I'm yeah, like, yeah, yeah, let's go. Mind. Let's fucking do I'll it. Fucking um, isn't it. there a new Assassin's Creed? Mirage? Yeah, it looks fun. It, they reverted back to like the old shit that made the old AC games fun, so it looks interesting for me. Like I might pick it up. I yeah. want a new Infamous. That's what I want. Yeah, that'd yeah, be that'd fun. be good. So, uh, I went to Florida. That's, you did. That's what Florida. I. Yeah, you were there for a minute. If I'm gonna be, I was literally there for four days. So, <laughs> if that's a minute, four minutes. I don't know. It uh, felt like a long minute. Nah, it was a real quick trip. It was just for the weekend, honestly. But you know, it was a very uh, eventful trip. It was fun. I got to see a lot of friends and family that I haven't seen from Florida in a long time. 
Uh, the chill and Bill. And to be honest, I don't really want to talk much about the trip because uh, I like nothing super momentous happened. It was just more of like a personal thing for me. Like I had a good time, but I did want to share one story that spread like wildfire on this trip. Uh, that happened on the first night that we got there. Okay. Uh, my room, we stood at a nine bedroom Airbnb. Like four of the bedrooms were, you know, like uh, master or not master, but like adult bedrooms. And then like three or four of them were themed kids' rooms. Mm-hmm. So granted, I got my own room mm-hmm. with two beds. I was in the Marvel superhero room. Oh my God. <laughs> it was a vibe, you know. Yeah. Fucking Captain you America Bobby, right behind me. You know, me. Bobby walked in with his suitcase, just dropped that shit. <laughs> like, Yo, I can go. If it was a race car bed, I would have I jizzed right there. But uh, it, was a, it was a good vibe. So at night, I'm in my bed. Uh, it's real hot because it's Florida, you know, even it's winter, but out there it's like 60, 70 degrees on a good day. Uh, and the heat is bumping. So I'm just trying to get warm. I'm tossing and turning. So I take off my clothes and I decide to sleep naked. Uh, and I turn around while I'm trying to fall asleep. I'm facing the wall. I notice the wall get way brighter. Like the wall goes from like dark to like bright. And I look behind me and it's my Diti Naomi opening my door with her flashlight on and she's like is this not my room and i'm just like looking back at her like naked with my ass out (laughs) and i'm like no and she's like oh my god sorry little bobby and she closes the door right the next morning she's telling everybody this story da 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 she's like yeah and i'm like yeah and i was naked she's like you weren't naked i saw you and i was like i was naked what are you talking about like i had one leg in one leg out it turned into this whole thing where she's like, I did not see your ass. I didn't see anything. It was too dark to see anything. And I didn't have my glasses. <laughs> and I was like, okay, fair enough. That it. night we go to a bar at Icon Park. We're having a good time. Okay. We reunite with a bunch of people. In the back of the fucking um, earshot behind me, are you saying that I saw his ass? I didn't see his ass. So she's spreading <laughs> this conversation to Ev. Like, I swear, three nights in a row, it's just Bobby's ass. This is the conversation, <laughs> right? But what's fucking funny is I go in there and I tell the story. And she goes, no, no, because I saw I saw your face. I saw your beard. And I was like, bitch, you just saw, you saw nothing the first time. <laughs> so now you're saying you saying you saw my face? Excuse me? Now you're changing the fucking story. So I just wanted to share that the highlight of this trip was my Diti Naomi. And but what I will admit was funny is I when I the said dumb, the it's like the dumb it's <laughs> not even it's the it's the like just the miss at, like the story didn't align it's but, not even like a no funny yeah shit. it's like this telephone fucking yeah. thing but what's funny to me is uh is when I told my version it's like because it's true I feel like I should have been more like uh like more I guess jumpy in the moment because I guess when I saw the flashlight instead of me turning around like oh like that it was definitely more like. <laughs> like a slower <laughs> sensual turn so i was like hello but i was also half asleep for what it's worth yeah. but uh yeah so my, my aunt saw it'd my be mad and, funny uh, if like other other people at this resort were like did you hear about that woman that saw that kid's ass and, and like, what's actually <laughs> funny is if you guys know I, obviously not many of the viewers know at home but if you know my titi naomi's husband ayala when he heard the story <laughs> oh. he was like what naomi you saw a patchy rug in the bed <laughs> It's like, oh my god, what's that polar bear in the bed? So, you know, that, the laughing stock of the fucking trip was my hairy back, apparently. So, there you go. That was, that was my Florida vacation. Nice. <laughs> a beautiful wedding, though. It was a great time. And uh, I also used it as an opportunity to watch a show yes. that I mentioned I started watching. Tyrannosaurus Rex. I've seen part of the show, so at least I could be part of a... Good. I've seen the first season. So. And I definitely encourage everybody here... I, I encourage everybody to watch this show, honestly speaking. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you follow this show, you know, last week I mentioned I uh, started a bit of a new television obsession, and that is the acclaimed series Welcome to Wrexham. Uh, we are in award season. The show actually won some Emmys at the Creative Emmys Awards, which if you don't know, it's kind of like a side Emmys Awards show that they do specifically for like the more technical categories, yeah. like editing and blah, blah, blah. And then they leave the more like directing, acting, writing stuff for the big, sh- the big show, right? Uh, so this series won for best. I think it was best non-scripted reality series or something like that. And it absolutely deserves it. Uh and I, I talk about a lot of shows, a lot of movies, a lot of songs and shit that uh, I get exposed to on the, on the channel and on this show in particular. But I found it absolutely necessary to review this show. Mm-hmm. So strap the fuck in because we're talking about Welcome to Wrexham. Yeah. Uh, Can I just say, to start off, I did not think, not that you wouldn't like this show. 
but uh-huh. I, I did not think you would have this sort of reaction to oh, the yeah. show going Absolutely. in Absolutely. as someone who saw like a few episodes before you did. No. Well, that's probably it. You yeah. probably got to keep watching the fucking yeah. show. Well, I mean, I watched the first season. It's very, it's, you know. You, what is you're, this you're, show about? you're lying, man. Because at first it was fucking, I saw three, four episodes and I saw well, the first no, two and I was the mm-hmm. first season. What the fuck is happening here, well, bro? No, that's no, what I'm saying. When we it. hung out that last time, that's <laughs> when I only saw the first few episodes uh-huh. like a year ago gotcha. or when it first came out. And now okay. I'm saying I watch more. Okay. But I haven't watched as much as you did. Point point is, uh, I know you guys weren't here when I first talked about it, but to bring everybody up to speed, uh, the show follows the story of Wrexham Football Club and Wrexham Wales, which interestingly enough is the third oldest football club in the world mm-hmm. uh, and the oldest one in Wales. Uh, in 2020, the team was sitting in the National League of the English Football uh, League. And this is important to note because I didn't know this before I went into it. But how the English Football League and how many European Football Leagues work is that there's kind of tiers, right? At the very top is what's called the Premier League. And this is where teams like Manchester United and, you know, the fucking... The pro. This is like the top of the... The top, top cream of the crop play, right? And then as you go down the tiers, it goes the Champion League, League One, League League Two. two, And then when you dip out of League Two, you go into like the bottom leagues or, or in the bottom tiers. And in these tiers... You're still a professional soccer player, but you're really only playing for like $50,000 a year. You're not really put in the spotlight that much. So there's a serious difference compared to like playing in this league and being fucking Ronaldo and playing in whatever leagues he's playing in, Mm -hmm. right? Uh, So in the middle of 2020, did I say 2020? In the middle of 2020, <laughs> Yo, it was crazy. It's it's future 20, year, 20, yeah. 20. In the middle of 2020, the team was sitting in the National League, which is that fifth tier, trying to bump themselves into the top four so that they could play for more money and get more benefits and whatnot. And uh, what's another very interesting thing is that at the end of every season, in every single tier, teams that are at the highest have the opportunity to be promoted into a higher tier. But teams that are at the lowest run the risk of being Relegated. demoted, mm. of getting demoted into a lower tier. Which is a very interesting thing in sports. That'd be really cool if that was like in basketball, yeah. right? Like so, if the if the worst team in basketball got sent to the G League, that'd be like it's, a whole it's, fucking. It's a real like ranked. It's a motivating a factor for sure. Exactly. You, you lose like millions of dollars for not being like uh, in the league. So in the middle of the pandemic, of all people, Rob McElhenney from It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia was right. introduced to not just the sport and the concept, but also the team itself by a friend of his, Humphrey Kerr, an English comedian who's mm-hmm. also a fellow comedy actor and writer. Right? Yes. Uh, when Rob heard about this, he had kind of the question that not only I had, but I figure a lot of people would have when they heard about this. And that was, you know, theoretically speaking, could someone buy a team in one of the lower leagues and help bring them up the ladder season after season? And technically that would be possible. So Rob McElhenney said, fuck it. I'm going to buy this team. However, he even jokes about it in the show. He's like, I have TV money. I needed movie money. So he brought Ryan Reynolds into it. And Ryan Reynolds and Rob McElhenney are the co-owners of the Wrexham Football Club in Wrexham, Wales, right? Uh, the series is an 18-episode docuseries, chronicles the lives of the players, the coaches, the club staff, the management team, and arguably, most importantly, the everyday people that live in this town. This documentary is as much a documentary as the town of Wrexham, Wales, as it is the football club. It, you think going in, it is just going to be like... Soccer, Ra- soccer, soccer, you, you, soccer. You think it's... No, and even then, you think it's going to be Ryan Reynolds sitting at a soccer stadium like, how does this work? You yeah, know, yeah, yeah. you think it's going to be that. but it's, And, and it, to a degree, it is. Yeah. But it's even more informative for you, mm-hmm. which is really special. Uh, the town of Wales is a really special place. You would never know that if you didn't really watch this show or knew it like these people know it, yeah. but that's another reason I encourage so many people to check it out. Uh, watching the series, you're going to learn about people who love this team and look to them as a source of hope and camaraderie while facing you know, crazy obstacles. I'm talking like loss, divorce, people who are fighting severe illnesses like cancer, and at the end of the day, they're just like, I just want to see Rex and make it to the top one more time. And it's like, fuck. Like it's, it cuts deep low-key. And through it all, these people are laughing, they're singing, they're chanting songs that are pre-written because no matter what, they have, you know, these these boys in red and white. And the show answers every single question you can have, you know, why Wrexham, why the fuck Rob and Ryan, and what's the catch? For Rob, it's more of like a personal connection to sports. He was born and raised in Philadelphia. He loves the Eagles. If you watch It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, that's a really big, like, kind of theme in the show. It's how much they love the Eagles and shit like that. And he's always talking about how sports was a big important thing for him in his life and his father's mm-hmm. life and stuff like that. He wants to help elevate that for a town who like 
deserves it times a billion because they've been following this team for over a century and a half. It's almost already like it's like a movie plot almost. Yeah, you know, or yeah, it's like it sounds like an it's underdog like, it's like, movie. Plot. It's like it's like a rich guy in a movie was like, hey, I want to buy a team. And, and it's and funny you should bring that up. Almost because FIFA oriented. And like, it's funny you should bring that up because for Ryan, it's all about the narrative. Yeah, it's all about the what if. It's all about the underdog story. He talks about it constantly. Mm-hmm. But what's really interesting is much like the viewers, much like myself that are watching the series, as the television season continues and as the football season continues, you get to watch Rob and Ryan get way more invested, not just in the players and the staff themselves, but in the game of football. Like mm-hmm. they're like, whoa, like we care about this. We're learning about it. And it's really cool to see. Uh, the show's had it has everything you could want, right? It's really heartfelt and emotional, but not for the sake of being sappy. Like it just tells stories and the fact that they're deep and hit you like that just so happens to be like that and it's really special uh it's funny it blends rob and ryan's comedic hollywood antics with scenes of just lads drinking at the pub and chanting at the games incredibly creative it has a uh, whole special episodes to focus on like the culture of whales and football mm-hmm. they even do a whole episode where it parodies television tropes where they do like a, a segment of sports center and do like a late night television show and stuff like that Uh, A lot of editing jokes and gags, a lot of post-production humor, which I fucking loved. It honestly reminded me of a lot of stuff I do here on Joystick. So to see that on a quote-unquote big screen with, Mm -hmm. you know, people like Ryan and Rob was really dope. You know, like swear counters. Fucking Ryan brings his mic into the bathroom and they keep it hot so you hear his pee stream the whole time. And there's text on the thing talking about it. So stuff like that I found like really fucking dope. Uh, And then last but not least, you know, it's just it, it tells a story, like a real story. The story of Welcome to Wrexham, it's just, it's a beautiful one. It tells the stories of the townspeople, the groundskeepers, Rob and Ryan in a completely new light, in a completely new light that you've never seen them before. And each single one of these people tells a vital part of the history that's made the town from its past to the present. Uh, my one con of the show, interestingly enough, came in episode 17 of 18. It's, without spoiling anything, because this is spoiler free. 16 and 18 are two very big events in the season for the team. Like, mm-hmm. the best way I could describe it is, like, 17 is, like, the fucking all-star game, and then 18 is, like, the final game. You know what I mean? And they're both incredibly important. Yeah. Episode 17 is a weird episode that targets Rob and Ryan's sort of bromance, and it starts talking about, like, how they became friends, and it's just, like, a weird pace killer for me, where it's, like, why put it here? But then the second half of the episode rolls around. Okay. And in the second half of the episode... They bring in like an actual psychologist to talk about what sports means to people, specifically to guys, but to people in general. Yeah. And it starts to delve away from the relationship between friends, specifically Rob and Ryan, to the relationships of fathers and sons, grandfathers and grandchildren, brothers, mothers and children, all about sports. Mm-hmm. And it's like a really touching, kind of like a nice way I'm to, I see, to I almost see, end the series on a positive note. I see note the like documentary that. reel in my head it's as beautiful. you're talking about it's it. I'm like, beautiful. fuck, I see it. I see the black and white. I see like someone holding a photo of their dad. Yeah, it's, you're like, it's, fuck. I'm, it's absolutely amazing. Yeah, it's crazy. For what it's worth, I had a lot of this documented on my phone. But I, I'm just going to read this last paragraph word for word, just okay. so you know you can hear it from me when I wrote it. Uh, Welcome to Wrexham made me something I never thought I'd be interested in soccer. Mm-hmm. The show tells what I might just consider to be the greatest sports story ever told. And the fact that it's completely real makes it that much more special. If you're a sports fan, I'd argue you're doing yourself a disservice if you haven't watched the first season of this amazing show. And for that reason, and so many more that I shared here, and even some I know I forgot... Welcome to Wrexham deserves nothing less than a 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10, Ooh, boys. One of the best television series I have seen in the past 10 years. This makes me want to watch wow. it. You have to watch this How show. long is the first season? Uh, there's two seasons. They're both 18 episodes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You were saying that the, the show t- t- talks not only about the team, but the town of Wales? Mm-hmm. I would say it talks almost more. Some episodes is more. Every thought, episode um, is like a different kind of topic or talking point, but it all helps to sort of move the narrative along of not just... Rob and Ryan buying the team, but also their season and how they're doing. So it's doing. like next episode, they're a week further, but they're also, there's like another focus point. I'm just here thinking that it's like, all right, we're going to go get breakfast for the team. We're going to go to this bagel shop. And then next thing you know, the whole episode derails about, oh, I was five when I had this bagel shop. No, like, no, I was, like, not, not nothing too crazy like that. But like, there's a whole episode that talks about like hooliganism and football culture and talks about how it specifically affected whales and things like that. Yeah. There's a whole episode. The The jokey episode is more... Honestly speaking, there's that one episode. I think it's called The Wonderful World of Whales because they, they kind of do a parody of the Y World of Disney or whatever. But they do like all television tropes. But that whole episode is to talk about like 
the culture of Wrexham to talk about the food that they eat, the singers that they have and stuff like that. But most of the series is dedicated to like the town and more specifically how they react and how much they care about this team. Like the best way I could, I can't even describe it. It's, it's like if this team wins or loses, that determines whether or not this entire town of people have a happy week or a sad week. Mm -hmm. Like that's Mm -hmm. how it's not even a joke, Joey. Like that's how, they, they interwoven care. this team is they to these people to this town, yeah. if you take away the team this it's almost like this town has nothing this anymore. town has nothing yeah wow it's crazy that, it's crazy yo jerry how's your relationship how's your father's relationship with sports your father likes sports like that uh he used to watch baseball back in the day but he doesn't really watch anything anymore my father doesn't watch anything either <laughs> yeah so he used to watch that. like mets games but then like it's time to break the cycle man gotta watch sports boys <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm I enjoy it. I think the only time I really got into sports was with uh, the Mario games, Mario baseball, Mario soccer. I mean, Mario. I like sports. I just don't like. We're talking real well. sports here. We're not talking about <laughs> playing them. No, nah, that that was the first time I like. I low key learned how to play sports yo, through yo, Mario. Yo, 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 yo! The first time I got into sports. No, no, New Dog City, 2018. Mario hit that grand <laughs> yeah, slam, that baby. Was, that was dope. That Mario, was dope. Mario, Mario, bro, no, can we, can fuck we Mario, that? fuck Mario, can, Luigi, bro. Can Luigi we film Luigi Mario? Mario can we film a? Can we film a 30 for 30 of when Donkey Kong hit a homer out of Daisy Stadium? Just take a just take one of the clips from the oh, Mario man. games and then just add that green to make fucking it look Luigi like, like I remember when fucking Funky Kong hit it, it over the wall it was... it's like do you guys remember when fucking Wario went into the stands in Detroit yeah. <laughs> and started beating up remember the great yeah. toad fucking w- chain chomp no remember when there was the all the toads started fighting in the stadium <laughs> all the stadium no, the, toads. the great toad stadium stampede of 86 <laughs> oh my god terrifying uh, stuff man. but yeah what a good fucking show i like it i need to watch more of it oh yeah well uh, rexham it's yeah, a great it's a it's fantastic good. show yeah 10 out of 10 i don't give 10 out of 10s uh lightly if anything i give 9.5s lightly but a 10 out of 10 <laughs> reserved for <laughs> masterpiece level and i spoil two things for myself one i won't share here because i want to keep up mm-hmm. the, you know i won't share the 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 fate you're of, watching of the club because you're watching it now. I mean, you could also look what happens. But I, I also checked the uh, the Rotten Tomato scores of season two because I wanted to rip the bandaid off and see if it's not as good as season one. And I think the critics scored season one at like ninety four percent, and I think two is like ninety. So yeah, so I'll it's, take it. It's more of the same. It's, it's not good. good by four. I'll so it, it sucks, <laughs> right? It sucks by four. So. It sucks by four. So uh, this one's better by four. So check out Welcome to Wrexham. I think very very highly of it. Please, somebody else talk for at least five minutes so that I don't go into my next thing because I've been talking a lot. I have a thing to talk about. Yeah? Yeah. So uh, it is also sports related. Ooh. It is no longer relevant because it happened like a week ago. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So behind me right now on the TV is a, a TV. It's a TV. That is a TV. In Bobby's basement. Yeah. In the stew. In the stew. Yeah. And it is playing football. Last week... Uh, NBC decided that they were going to take one of their three football games and put it exclusively on Peacock. I heard about this. So that you had to pay for Peacock to watch an NFL game. Yeah, I was in Florida and people like all of my uncles were scrambling together like, who has Peacock? We need Peacock. And like Crazy. they couldn't find so it. So they were trying to get this game. That they, and By the way, it was the Chiefs as well. So like, wow. did you need the wow. subscription to Peacock? I believe like, I Peacock believe, is free. I believe so. I believe so. Smile. Or at least you needed the sign up to like, a, I don't even think it has a trial. But I think there was like, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> The fuck's just throwing me off. It's like video game avatars of football players, but they're like the size of giants. I've seen that before, but I haven't seen it with that kind of output. Anyways, uh, everyone was fucking angry. People were like throwing riots at bars and shit because the stream, by the way, didn't buffer either so pe- or it didn't load so people just had like the fucking bar it that didn't sucks. work it was supposed to be like 4k it couldn't even run like standard mm-hmm. definition and even worse nbc only has one football crew but they had over two games to film so they had to hire an entire new uh director production team cameramen they had to sh- buy new cameras all to film this football game 
So they had a bunch of people directing this football game that never worked in sports before. So you would have a graphic uh, come up great. of being like, Mah- Money Mahomes throws 18, like this beautiful graphic, and it cuts and the play's fucking over. Like the play, we didn't even see what happened. And then they show a replay of the play that we missed, and then we missed the next play again. And it was just nonsense. That's they, funny. They did drone shots of the game as it was happening. Like, oh, good. Now I can watch the game from space and not see what's happening. Listen, as somebody who's watched a lot of the NBA and very little of the NFL this may seem biased to say and if anybody can can break the bias it's definitely mm-hmm. you as hype as the NFL like I'll always be the one to acknowledge that NFL out of all the big four is probably the hypest I mean in America. Super Bowl probably, like, like people, Super, people Super care Bowl, about it you know? Super Bowl is a holiday man. So the Super, Super Bowl, Bowl numbers compared to the last game of the World Series yeah you know how many people watch the last game of the World Series like 5,000 fucking nobody yeah, I was about to say like, nobody. especially last year when it was Texas and Arizona people were like fucking I'll go to bed the Diamondbacks <laughs> too many syllables yeah right? literally but fucking anyway, bring Randy Johnson back <laughs> I will always acknowledge that football is the hypest sport, yeah. truly. But as someone who's watched a lot of the NBA and a little bit of the NFL, I always think that the NBA has like their media and shit like at the top at the top. Yeah. Where every year they're introducing this new angle or this new thing where you're like, whoa. And it feels like football just fucking like they try to do it and it always fails football, so football hard. Football is really football. rare. They're like, we're gonna have Toy Story play football yeah. this year. <laughs> like they just do the weirdest they, they shit. They do they do Weird. things that don't really work, and then occasionally they do work. Like they change the way that like the overhead camera works now. That it's more of like a drone type system where like you can track the players. That's pretty cool, but besides that, there's like nothing new. And then, what if and, they and had, then the, the MLB chairman director board just has like a fucking comedian on it because they come up with the weirdest shit. There's that whole that, right. They did that whole thing where you could like pretend to hit the ball and get like a fake run or some shit like that. Wait, what is this? The the, the guy that did that whole thing where you could like pretend to hit the ball and it was like a fake home run and he runs the bases and shit like that and there's no pitch or anything. <laughs> You never seen this? Wait, what are we talking about? In the MLB. Yes. There's they did like a fake rule where like a a batter could go up and they could like score a fake home run. Okay. Yeah. (laughs) It's bullshit. Yeah. Bullshit. Like that was a real thing. Or like even then, like I feel like baseball was just kind of like baseball's the opposite. Baseball is like all about tradition. So it'd be like It feels very traditional. It's all like they're they're the fuck was this you guys remember that there was like for like there is a i forget what it's called but it was like it was like a wristband that had like carbon energy or something the base, like the that. balance band yeah <laughs> the balance bands and there's two different companies that made this shit i don't know if you remember this joey that there was like this these two companies that made like crystal mm-hmm. like carbon yeah. band it was like a plastic band and it had like a, a reflective thing, thing in the yeah, middle a little sticker on the front yeah the mm-hmm. little reflective sticker now like the biggest sports game in history loki yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. mario mario didn't touch football for some reason yeah. he didn't <laughs> no. he did this is a mario yeah. football game there's a Mario soccer game oh, if soccer, that's what you're yeah, talking strikers, about. Yeah, but yeah there's football. not a football it's game too violent. there's no like mario <laughs> gridiron or something like that. no it should Crazy. be. It's not touched. I don't know why. Anyway, I got a, uh, I got one last thing to touch on before we wrap it up, and that Bobby is over uh, here touching things. And that is that I watched two other television shows. Okay. However, I knew I was gonna. I've been watching a lot of stuff, so I wasn't be gonna be able to finish them in time. But I definitely wanted to speak to them because they're two very different shows. They're two shows that are getting very popular at the moment, and I wanted to, to speak to them. So since uh, Echo is first alphabetically speaking, I'll talk about Echo real quick. Echo is Marvel's newest show. People have been making claims that it's the best Marvel show since WandaVision. Which wow. Which is a, a big claim That's to a make. big claim. Uh, I've only watched the first episode from what I've seen of the first episode. Show is fucking good. Show is really fucking good. Damn. Uh, right off the bat, the show... It sucks. Right off the bat, show opens not only with a TVMA warning, which I thought was oddly refreshing for Marvel. Like, that's kind of... I haven't seen something like that since, like, Daredevil Punisher days on Netflix. So yeah, that was those, pretty cool. Those are cool. Um... The show also opens with a new bumper, like a new banner that says uh, Marvel Spotlight. And immediately I was like, what the fuck is this? Like, you're so used to seeing the traditional Marvel mm-hmm. thing. Yeah. Looked it up, and apparently Marvel's kind of going in a new direction. Uh, check this out. I think it's a good step. Where they want to start telling stories based on characters we've seen before that are more centralized. So it doesn't necessarily mean that these stories won't affect the overarching plot of the MCU, but you can watch these shows or hopefully in the future case movies without having to have seen shit in the past to get caught up. Mm. So you can watch these They're shows standalones. Stand-alone. Yeah. Okay. 
and I think it's a pretty good step, right? So that being said, um, I will spoil one thing about episode one. So sorry, spoiler warning. You've been, you've, you've been warned. That's what it is. We've been warned. Uh, the, if you've seen Hawkeye, the show follows the character Echo from that series, who is the the deaf uh, assassin. Uh, first of all, I didn't even know that the actress is legitimately deaf in real life. She's doing lots of press junkets now where she brings her translator with her. It's very interesting. Uh, fucking the show actually opens up showing her life before she was like hired by Kingpin to like do all her like mobster stuff. And the show actually has like a really interesting sequence that happens like five to 10 minutes in the episode. Mm -hmm. In the episode, she's going with some of Kingpin's goons to go like kill some people in a deal or something like that. When they get into the room and they start beating all the people up and, and fucking them up, uh, one, of the, fucking them. one of the goons who's in a suit who like at, uh, at first was making fun of her, they were like, oh, we got to babysit this kid. Was like, oh, good, good, good job, girl. A grapple hook comes out of nowhere and like pulls him back. And the, the subtitles say Billy Club sound. And I was immediately like, oh. and it turns and it's fucking Daredevil. It's like legitimately Charlie Cox Daredevil. And it turns into a whole fight sequence of Charlie Cox Daredevil versus Echo. And it was so rad. Like it's it's him. He's doing his whole spiel. But it's like acrobatic fight choreography. All the shit that I've said before. Because, you know, the fight the fighting choreography in the original daredevil on netflix is fantastic mm -hmm. but i always said like i wanted to see more of that like comic book acrobat stuff they do it perfectly this it's not over oh, the top so cool. it's not over the top like in she hulk or anything like that it's so perfectly well done it's amazing and it just makes me that much more excited to see more of daredevil in the future so that being said the first episode alone has me very hooked uh, i'll be able to talk more about it in the future when i see all six episodes but as of right now, it does look to be one of the more promising entries in the MCU as of late. So. I will say that I think it was kind of obvious that everyone liked like Luke Cage, those uh, Daredevil, those Marvel shows that were on Netflix. Mm -hmm. And it just seemed like a letdown that when they came together at the end, that show I heard for the movie, was it? Defenders. Yeah, it was not great. And then they just canceled it. And it was like, but we liked that. Yeah, <laughs> we liked them. <laughs> They're like, oh, okay, we failed. <laughs> Fuck all those guys. <laughs> Fry them. And we were like, we, we wanted to see more of them. Just right. make yeah. a better story. Echo Echo's looking to be a pretty fun, new, mature uh, entry into the MCU. And I'm excited to finish it and talk more about it in the future. You guys should check it out so we can talk about it together. No. I definitely want to check it out now, now that Daredevil's in it. Yeah. Low-key Daredevil well, is... He was in the trailer, so I, not in it. He's I, awesome. I knew Daredevil was going to be in it because he's in the trailer and stuff like that. But I didn't know he was going to be like right yeah. in the beginning of it that's dope i mean yeah. from what it seems like it doesn't look like he's going to be in it much longer because mm -hmm. of how the the trajectory or how the timeline stuff works but i'm satisfied enough for what yeah. it's worth also it was just really cool to just have it be surprised like that like mm -hmm. it's, so there's no lead up to it it, it kind of reminded me of like when you used to play the old marvel games and just like fucking thor would show up and he'd be like <laughs> oh yeah Whoa. he's in this universe you know what i mean it doesn't have to be this whole whole spiel uh the other show uh, when i say show the other show, la, 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 la. the other show that I've been watching is a little show named Ted mm -hmm. uh, by <gasps> Seth MacFarlane. Uh, Fuck you, Thunder. That's all we gotta say. You can honestly. suck my dick. Yeah. I have Can't been, uh, I have been excited for the show for a long time, and then forgot about it. And then when it came out, I was like, oh shit, that show that I've been excited for for a long time. I watched it. <clears throat> And it is, uh, it's hilarious. It's fucking hilarious. It really. I, I watched a few scenes with Bobby, and yeah. it literally just looks like a live action Family, family Guy. guy. It More is, specifically, yeah. it reminds. I told Dylan, it reminds me of like a live action Family Guy from like seasons one through five. Those old school mm. Seth MacFarlane driven episodes. Lots of old TV reference humor. Lots of like colorful, stupid gags that really shouldn't work in like a live action sitcom situation, but random do one off of characters McFarlane. that are fucking hysterical. I thought that was really cool because that's something you usually only see in like cartoons, but mm -hmm. here we bring it to live action and it works so, so well. Uh, I saw a lot of people that have been praising the CGI for like how good Ted actually looks in the world and stuff like that. And, and I for a TV show. I've also too. noticed it too, it's pretty well done. Uh, people have criticized uh, the length of the show. I think the pilot itself is like 50 minutes long, and I think it's like only seven episodes, but each episode's like 30 minutes. I don't fucking care. If it's enjoyable, I'm not really going to care about the runtime of a series. But from what I've seen in episode one, I've actually seen the first two episodes. That's how much I enjoyed the first one. Fucking hilarious. I, I was in the mood for a new uh, comedy for what it was worth. Mm -hmm. So I definitely, I would highly recommend that to everybody here. Knowing you guys, it's definitely up your alley, especially you. It's funny. But it's it's really fucking funny. And 
it's weird because at first you the the ted accent is so similar to the peter accent so it's almost hard to differentiate it at first but eventually you get you get used to it and you're like oh no 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 no, that's it's ted it's not peter <laughs> but yeah great show great cast fucking i found out the mom who's like a perfect boston mom is puerto rican and mexican i didn't know that that blew my fucking mind yeah the boston she's accents not, are pretty good yeah she's on the yeah, show word. like honey you're drinking another beer and i'm like oh shit she's like a fucking she's a hispanic but yeah, great fucking show. Uh, if I had to give early reviews, I would give Echo like an eight out of ten. Ted an eight. Out, I think they're both eight out of ten so far. Eight out of tens. Yeah, that's dope. So yeah, check out those shows and uh, check out the songs we were about to recommend hey, for you. Seamless. Bah! Yeah, buddy. Nice. What you got for me, Dill? Yo, so I have a million different fucking songs. Mm-hmm. I don't know what to pick, so I'm just going to pick one, and my yam is going to be. Uh, Leap Into the Lightning by Enter Shikari. Uh, I was looking at a bunch of bands that put out music in 2023 that I missed out on. And a bunch of bands, a bunch of artists that I missed, I completely didn't know that they put out any music. Were we like just talking about this too? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I was listening to this album. So like the first part of the song sounds like a driving chase scene in in a movie. And then it turns into like a really catchy kind of pop song. Mm-hmm. So I don't know how to feel about it, but it does have like that. I mean, Enter Shikari's always had like that underlying vibe of multiple genres. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, fucking mad catchy. I love a British accent in my music. Bobby you know, Woods, you know so. what I love? What you've done with the place. There's a lot of that, bro. Imagine <laughs> that, but like actually harmonizing. It's great. Okay, okay. Yeah. So I had to do that for yeah. myself. Uh, you. Joey learned his uh, his slam on guitar because apparently it's a. It's a slam. Yeah, slam. whatchamacallit. I heard this during the week that I was sick, which was like two weeks ago. Mm-hmm. I wasn't on the podcast for a minute. But um, this song has been stuck in my head. It's called La Diabla by uh, Zavi, mm-hmm. X-A-V-I. Uh, it's Spanish. It's a Spanish song. And no it's way. Really, yeah, cool. And uh, it's really dope. It's in like um, the same genre of like uh, Peso Pluma. I think they did a... Oh, like Corridos. Kind yeah. Of. Ah, so it's like Javi. Like Javier fire mm-hmm. cool and jerry listens to music so yeah i haven't listened to a lot of new music i'm gonna be honest with you no. uh i listened to the 21 savage album and there's a good song on there with burner boy and 21 savage called just like me fire yeah 21 21 uh real quick i've been doing this a lot lately and i'm sorry because it feels in disingenuous where like i don't give the song my jam but i shout it out anyway yeah but you, whatever you're, you're a little whatever too, you're a little too I yeah, run the ship. Jam I slut. edit the show fucking six hours a week. I'm allowed mu- to fucking shout out a song, song every whore. Now. Real quick, shout out to the song Behind the Goal by, I'm going to fucking butcher this, Josue Greco. He is the composer for Welcome to Wrexham. This is like the main theme of the of the show. Whenever something triumphant happens, this song plays. And this song could make me fucking cry on its own. <laughs> I have worked out to this song. I have made breakfast to this song. I have You've showered love to, this to this song. song. And I haven't done that one yet. But every to, time to I do yourself. something to this song, yes. I feel that much better about myself. But my jam of the week instead is going to go to Rich Baby Daddy by Drake featuring Sexy Red and SZA because, Dylan, sometimes you just have to (laughs) bend that ass over and let that coochie breathe. (laughs) He's been saying this every fucking time we're on fucking PlayStation. Bend that ass over. Let that coochie breathe. (laughs) I know the song. It's a good song. Shake that ass for Drake. Shake that ass for me. It's great. It just made. I've also worked out to that song, and I get a better pump. So. Bobby, Bobby just wants to uh, show his ass to Drake. Honestly, oh yeah, it's in Florida. Yeah, if you fun. if you were a fifteen year old girl, you'd be really you'd be yeah. really lucky. <laughs> well, thanks for watching episode one hundred and seventy six of the Joystick Show. Before we get into the ending, may I just say it was refreshing. Nice that was a good you, one. Nice to have you boys back. Welcome Boy. back. Let's uh, get back to doing some fun stuff. Let's go to Florida this year. Let's make it happen. You guys would have a great time. I want to go to Florida. I want to. You would love it. it. It'd be your first time. Joey, <laughs> Joey, you, you're, it's your place to be. Honestly, yeah, you for should. me, it's, it's the place for you. <laughs> I, I low key find it funny that GTA Six takes place yeah, in right. Florida. Like, <laughs> love that game there. series. I love that game series, and it's like, what's in Florida now? And I'm like, cool. <laughs> <laughs> getting PTSD. Uh, thanks for watching. It'd be helpful if you guys could like this episode. If you guys could subscribe to Team Joystick. Uh, yeah, we're we're doing some new stuff as of late. We're trying to we're trying to switch up what we do here. Switch up what the vibes are, what we look like. We're trying to go from little nerdy wordies to cool boys. Uh, that's not a good start, but we're gonna get better at it. Yeah. Um, in the meantime, uh, you can check us out next Wednesday when we uh, hang out with you for another forty-five minutes to an hour talking about some new shit. 
Uh, and, uh, um... Eh. Uh, eh. Uh, I don't, I don't know. Um... I'm stay tuned. Turns off this. Sean Paul. <laughs> <laughs>